speak about hip hop and how hip hop's lyrics are very violent. And a lot of times people forget that rock and roll was on this was had the spotlight because their lyrics were considered demonic and promoted violence. This is the title of this article. Murder case spotlights marketing of violent lyrics. They stalked her, they choked her, they stabbed her, and after she was dead, they raped her. The 1995 murder of 15-year-old Elise Pauler was inspired in part one of her killers told police by the heavy metal music of Slayer, a popular band that specializes in misogynistic songs depicting torture and satanic sacrifice. The teenage murderers confessed to the killing years ago and are serving long prison terms. But for the victim's family, the case is not closed. The Paulers, in a lawsuit that goes to trial this week in San Luis Obispo Superior Court, are seeking to hold the band and its recording company at least partially responsible for the crime. Unlike similar cases of alleged rock and roll inspired mayhem that have been tossed out of court on First Amendment grounds, this one takes a novel legal approach, one that focuses on the increasingly controversial practices of entertainment marketing. Now, so, you have to keep in mind that rock and roll actually, there was a movement against rock and roll. Um, the senators, uh, the, the, our Congress actually held hearings about the lyrics of rock and roll, and it was almost banned. And famously, D. Snyder and Frank Zappa actually appeared in Congress. And I just typed D. Snyder, and the first thing that popped up was Congress. See, the P the PMRC was a group of women who represented the mothers of America, generally suburban America, and they did not like rock and roll because yes, rock and roll had a lot of de demonic lyrics, and. Uh, we're going to tie this into hip-hop. I just want you to watch a little bit of this clip right here, okay? Just so that you can understand and so that we can be transparent and fair. This was an iconic moment. D. Snyder. As part of my written testimony. Thank you, United Way. Accusation number three. Last Tuesday, a public forum regarding the lyric controversy was held in New York. Among the panelists was Ms. Gore. Trying to stem the virtual tidal wave of anti-rating sentiment coming from the audience, Ms. Gore made the following statement, quote, I agree this is a small percentage of all music, thank goodness, but it's becoming more mainstream. You look at even the t-shirts the kids are wearing, and you see Twisted Sister and a woman in handcuffs sort of spread-eagled, unquote. This is an outright lie. Not only have we never sold a shirt of this type, we have always taken great pains to steer clear of sexism in our merchandise, records, stage show, and personal lives. Furthermore, we have always promoted the belief that rock and roll should not be sexist, but should cater to males and females equally. Right, so here's a little bit of Frank Zappa. My next witness will be Mr. Frank Zappa. This is one senator that might be interested in legislation and or regulation uh, to some extent uh, recognizing the problems with free right of expression and my large yellow J on all material written or performed by Jews in order to save helpless children from exposure to concealed Zionist doctrine. Record ratings are frequently compared to film ratings. Apart from the quantitative difference, there is another that is more important. People who act in films are hired to pretend. No matter how the film is rated, it won't hurt them personally. Since many musicians write and perform their own material and stand by it as their art, whether you like it or not, an imposed rating will stigmatize them as individuals. And that was when, uh, see, what, what, what actually happened is the PMRC succeeded in getting ratings. And ratings mean... Okay, this album has a rating of, uh, you got to be 21 or older, it has mature concepts. So that's what they won. They basically, and that's what they wanted, you know, Tipper Gore, you know, um, they just wanted, hey, okay, if you're going to talk about demonic, violent lyrics, and it's just you being creative, and it's just an artistic expression, put a rating on the album. Don't, you know, put a rating on it so that mothers and parents can know, okay, this has some wild stuff in it. Here's John Denver speaking at the PMRC hearings. Of any kind, in our society or anywhere else in the world, 
I've had in my experience two encounters with a sort of censorship. Uh, my song. All right, so basically, I, I made this video because Crazy Bone was on the viral hip hop news, and he was just saying that hey, um, hip hop used to be positive. He was just basically saying that there was a, an, an agenda, there was something in play that was making the lyrics violent just in hip hop, and um. Hold on. And they've basically taken it and changed it completely in the opposite direction of what the purpose was. Because hip-hop was a tool that was meant to inform our people. And basically, hip-hop is going through what rock and roll went through in the 80s with this violent lyrics. And people are starting to question, what's going on? Why is hip-hop all about murder, gangbanging, and violence? So, yeah, man, I just want to give you... Uh, a little information because rock rock and roll went through this and um yeah man maybe hip hop can learn something from it 